Well, um, we're going to do a math circle. And uh, the math circle we're going to do is the Euclidean algorithm, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Um, just to be sure, let's, um, let's practice a little bit. So, does everybody have paper? No. Okay, so maybe, so maybe you need paper. Um, yeah. have a pencil? And by the way, I'm Blake Thornton, and I'm in St. Louis at Washington University. And uh, I've been running a math circle there for, uh, I don't know, five or six years now. And, um, <coughs> <coughs> Okay, and I apologize, I am slightly unprepared, but uh, we'll, we'll bear with me and we'll be all right. Okay. So, everybody have a little paper? Okay, so there, there's, uh, Euclidean algorithm is a, is a really popular math circle topic. Um, the, um, how many people here run math circles? So almost everybody. How many, and have all of you done Euclidean algorithm in your math circle? No. No, okay. So may, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, probably my favorite um, Euclidean algorithm exercise uh, I learned from Harold Ryder um, is the, uh, the, the, the jars and the liquid. So, um, so this is an introduction, but my, my thought was most people have done Euclidean algorithms, so I wanted to move a little bit beyond that. So you have, uh, say, a five and a three. And you're allowed to put water in, and the question is how much water can you create? And uh, if you have high school kids, maybe you can even show the clip from Die Hard. And uh, do, you do you remember this? Yes. Okay. And he's Bruce Willis is running around, and he had, and um, it was Samuel Jackson, maybe. Yes. Okay. And he's running around, and they're trying to create one gallon of water. Okay. So, um, so this doesn't at all appear very Euclidean algorithmic. But um, anyhow, I'm just gonna I'll, I'll, I'm gonna leave that there and let you guys practice that. You're, you're allowed to fill up a, a jar, and you're allowed to pour a jar out. Do you understand the problem? No. Okay, so the problem, so, so you, you have these jugs of water that you can put water in. And you're allowed to either fill the jug. All the way. All the way. If you, if you get it wrong, the, the um, I can't remember what blows up in the movie. Is it something blows up. A bomb. There's a bomb. Sure. Okay. The kids die or something like this, right? Okay, so, so you want to make sure it's exactly right. So you, you can fill it up or you can pour it out and you can pour it into the other jug too. So, um, yeah, so five minus three equals two. So there's, uh, there's one way to get two gallons. Right? And you practice this for a while. It, it's, it's, it's a great exercise for kids because in a matter of, say, 15, 20 minutes, somebody will have a solution. And you can talk about, um, you can talk about why that's good. Okay, so that, that's, that's, that's a Euclidean algorithm exercise. It's a good one to write down. Go play with your kids. Um, it's a great one. So, so Euclidean algorithm is used for um, finding the greatest common divisor. Most of us know this, maybe not. But uh, so, how do you find the GCD? Here's an exercise for you. How are you doing it? You're doing it in your heads. So what? What? So so. So what's the GCD again? Three. three. So we get three, which means. Okay, and how did you get it? Did you factor? Okay, so I saw some people factor, and when you give this to your um, to your middle school kids, is math circle mostly middle school for most of you? High school, younger? Is everybody run, running younger middle school? Oh, good. How, how young do you guys go? First grade. First grade. What year old? 
preschool. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you, so you guys. So, so anyway, uh, so we, we, I usually start my kids about fifth grade, and, um, and I don't know what to really do with uh, my second graders that come in. But uh, anyway, so, so this is a great discussion. Uh, most, most of them know what GCD is by the time about fourth grade, probably. Okay. And of course, how to, so how, so um, the way to do it with, um, the way to find the GCD, the algorithmic way, the Euclidean algorithm way, is of course you would do some division, right? So you've got to start introducing. So we got to find a quotient, and we have to find a remainder. So one <coughs> six. And then the next step. So the next step to bring these two down, right? So this is this is the mass circle problem I, I want us to work on today. Is how many steps? How many steps does it take to run the Euclidean algorithm? Has anybody done this with their kids? Good. Okay. Good. Because I, I was worried about having something there. <coughs> okay. So here's here's what we're going to do. We're going to split up into teams, oh. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna start running this, and um, and we want to figure out how many steps it takes to do the Euclidean algorithm and start drawing some conclusions. So, um, so we're going to make what I had for you that is not here is a chart like this. And uh, let's do Does everyone understand what I want you to do? So we're going to start. In my experience, the best math circles are with deep problems that you can get your hands on. So I want you to get your hands on this problem. How many steps does it take to um, to run the Euclidean algorithm? So I want to get a lot of data. Um, so we're going to start. You know, I want you to find GCD of one and one. GCD. Um, Two and one. VCD, three and one. I want you to record. I don't care about the GCD. I care about how many steps it took to get there. And how do we count? We okay. do not count the last row. I count the last row because you have to do. Do you mean how do you? Okay. This took three steps. We just want to make sure that we understand. Yep. Yeah. So that this took three steps because you you have to get to that zero remainder, right? Or or you have to. <coughs> okay. Do you agree? Okay. You got to do it, right? Yeah. <coughs> I, I do want to distribute it, but I can't think of a, a smart way to do that. Can you? How about the k first and the nth row? <laughs> 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 well, 
Like, like I think a lot of people have ideas for filling in big swaths of that. So that's, that, and that's the whole point. So is that is that as you work, you're, you're going to get, you're going to write. This is what you want your kids to do. As you work, you're going to start proving theorems and be able to and be able to um, fill in, in large large sections at once. Well, let's just do it up there. Um, make a make, make us a nice table. I'll give us a few <laughs> minutes while you make this table. Okay. And uh, then we'll go at it. Well, I almost like the chalkboard. You can't write on that one, huh? Okay. Can I write on this one? Because 
um, because you have one step, because your remainder is going to be zero that first time. Awesome. So, so in fact, you filled out, you could go all the way down. Okay, everybody see that? Okay, all right, thank you. Do you know you. what the prime number is? Do you know what the prime number is? Think, but wouldn't it be always one when one of the factors is a prime number? When one of the factors is a prime number, wouldn't be the greatest common divisor always one? <laughs> okay, so, so we, we have a question. Um, so the question is, is what happens when, when one of these is a prime number? For example, down here, 7, or down here, over here, 13. Does it matter what the other one is? What? Does it matter if one of them is a prime? Does it matter what the other one is? So you have a GCD? Of something and the prime. Oh, fire. Well, we're not interested in the GCD. That's right, we're not interested in the GCD, we're interested in the steps. The number of steps. Yeah, but if it's one, it's one step, right? Okay, so, the, but let, let, okay, so that's going to give us something else to think about. Does it matter if there's a prime? Okay, the, 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 that's good, thank you. Oh, yes, yes, the number of steps. Yes, the number of steps. Okay, so let's... So let's, um, the, I saw some other generalizations, um, but keep going and keep drawing conclusions. We'll, we'll see where we are.
That's right. I reached out to the right You did give something like that. Yeah, right. Like the Yeah, no, the point is it's hard to see what people do, but you yeah. can cup in and... By the way, have you met Bill Richard? Uh, no, this I've is, This is him right to your right. Back a couple of hours back. The guy in the white striped shirt. With the bandana. With the headband. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, maybe some of you have stumbled on this, but here's a nice proposition. And I, I, I like that there's a lot of chatter and the working. Uh, but anyway, here, here's a proposition just to bring us back together. You guys all agree with it? If one number is a multiple of the other number, it's going to take one step because you get zero remainder right away. Anybody else have any other patterns they're noticing? When um, one number is one greater than the other, oh, it's two steps, except for when one of the numbers is one. Can you take that twist eye off? Now it's pulling the camera down. If A equals B, other way, I think. B plus one, then? <coughs> then what? It was two steps. Then it should be two steps? And also B is not one. Trouble with my stuff. So what do you want me to write? No, A equals B plus 1 and B is not equal to 1. Then it was 2 steps. B not equal to 1? Then number steps for AB is 2. Do you guys agree with that? Can anybody prove it? Okay. So, um, you want me not equal to one for that? Did I write down what you wanted? Okay. That's interesting. So already this is this is going to help fill out a whole big big group bunch of this uh, chart, right? Okay, I don't know how to say this, but like I'm gonna this out to like fall apart after a while. But when you do like four with anything, it's like one, two, three, one, two, three. You know when you fill in that column? Okay, so so you guys are you guys have this here. One, two, one, two. Yeah, yeah. And then it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah. And okay. then you guys agree with those? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And in particular, um, in particular, this this previous um, proposition says that this diagonal here is all ones. Yeah. You guys all agree? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, and so, what about this one, two, one, two, three? The four is What's that? Did anybody prove that? For what? It's did, did, 
Does anybody approve that that pattern holds? It's just because even an odd. Okay. <laughs> so the, 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 the claim is, is that the two column goes one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way down? Yes. Okay. The three column? One, two, three, one, two, three, all the way down. The four column? One, two, two, three. One, two, two, three. One, two, two, three. Let's pick up the even. And I have no idea what that's like. I haven't proved it, but I think the primes are all the cycles. One to the Prime cycle, one to the Ah, so, so the, this is like the juncture then? Yes. Maybe we can use the notation. Maybe we can use like square brackets. Yeah, there's got to be some way to improve on what I'm doing. <laughs> if P is a prime, <laughs> then the P, the P column goes one, two. Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> okay. Okay, does everybody understand that about the conjecture more or less, like you want to? Yeah. Sorry. Does everybody understand the conjecture? No. So, so the claim was that um, the claim was is that if you have a if you take a column that has a prime number on it and you go down, it's going to cycle. So um, and it's going to go one. Th Two, so it's a two prime, so it's one, two, one, two. Three, one, two, three. Oh, it's looking good. One, two, three, five. What happens on the five column? That's <coughs> yes, one, two, three, four, three, one, three, three. Oh, see, it looked like it looked like it was one, two, three, four, and then it's five. Three. No. Okay. Right. So then what happens? Sorry. Three, one, three, three. And then I. Should be. Should be two, three. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's three, but it is 11. <coughs> Alright, so... Yeah, it should be a 2 in the 11th. In any case, the conjecture's yes. been proven false. Right. right? <laughs> it should be a 2 at the 11th. Yeah. Right there. Three, four, three. One, two, three, four, three. 
Does everybody understand the conjecture? Is it only true for primes? Well, what do you say? Why is it true? Go back to your first step on the top four. It's going to just the first remainder is going to be the same. It's driving it on the very first. And when you said 42, it's four times nine plus the remainder. The only thing that's going to matter is that first remainder, and that's going to be between one and p. So that's a, that's, that's, zero and that's a beautiful argument. So the, the um, so the, the conjecture has been improved. It's, it doesn't matter that it's a prime number. Every column should repeat, and it should repeat. So this, this should repeat every six numbers. Okay. Does it? Okay. Or, or more frequently. Or more frequently, but uh, that's, so, that's a good question. But it certainly repeats every six. Yeah, so what? Diagonal. Okay, diagonal is a good thing to look at. So if A and P have a common divisor, then it's the same number of so he so wants to pick up what? The number of steps for A times K and B times K is the same as the last one. So it's every one number. You can probably do better than that, too, right? So I can do this one. Yeah, so it's every one number. So like when you build your table up. Uh, okay, so Okay, so good. Um no, no, are, you, are you still having fun? Are you still playing? Okay, well then I have a question for you. Um how, how much of your table have you filled up? Like you've gone down to about 112, 14? Is that good like mine? <laughs> Alright, well here's some interesting things to notice. Let's go down and looks like um, let's find the biggest numbers as we go down. Let's find the biggest numbers as we go down. So, okay, so um, it looks like so far we got this guy here. And maybe as we go down, you might even circle this guy here. You might circle that one. You understand what I'm, what my, how I'm doing this? So as you go down the column, I want you to circle the next biggest number. Where's the five going to be? We would be surprised to circle that guy. So that's something to work on for a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
Some neat patterns. Anybody can. We can all do the computations, right? And you're gonna. And as long as you're willing to sit down and muscle through some computations, you're gonna make some progress. Yeah. And I, th I think, to me, that's the beauty of a good math circle: is to be able to give give a problem that's that's within you know that the math might be deep, but you're always gonna make progress if you're willing to sit down and do some computations. The computations are usually fun. Too, right? So. You guys do these? Do they work? So what's the pattern? So so let, let's let's write this and the greatest number. So what do we have? We have one and one, uh, two and uh, three and uh, three and two. I'm going to write it a little differently. Two and three, three and five, five and eight, eight and thirteen. This three. Okay, and so um, these should be numbers we all recognize, right? Okay. So then, of course, the harder questions are why, and like any other, any good math circle, there should always be a why. And I don't know about your students, but I only get a couple that are very good at saying whys, but um, they get better every year. Is this saying when we write the five eight that the greatest number? So, so, okay, so there, there's something, that's a very good point. So there's something to be cleared up here. What do I mean by the greatest number of steps? Because, of course, this has more steps. Between what two numbers? So I mean, uh, I want, so I want the greatest number of steps so that this number here is greater than any number that has twos and threes that, or, or less than numbers. So, I, I, so when we pick the three out, any, any, any other pair with... Nothing, nothing to the north or to the west is... is that's a great way to put it, Paul. Nothing to the north and the west is, is uh, bigger than that. Okay. It feels like there's an entry missing there. It feels like there should be a 1-2 between the 1-1 one, one It does feel that way. It just doesn't yeah. feel right. Yeah. 
So, um, anyway, so I, I'm going to leave it there, and I am going to have I have a handout that you can print out. I have a handout that you can have if you um, if, if you track me down uh, tonight or tomorrow, but not right now. Can we email you? That would be Can perfect. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yes. I will ask all speakers to send final handouts to me after the conference so that I can put it all on the website. So we should, sure if they're willing to get the slides from there, I've got a handout from play, video, notes, and comments should all go up on the web. And, uh, and just, uh, as I'm as Assuming everybody runs their masters like me, the greatest source for our problems are, are you guys. So um, we have lots of stuff up on the web. So, uh, anyway, so that's that's what I, I wanted to show you that uh, mass circle problem today. Yeah. How old are my kids? Um, we so my mass circle we mostly are running from. I, I tell parents the fifth grade. I feel very good about a fifth grader coming into us, and then I generally lose them when they're about the tenth grade. Um, is that typical? <laughs> but that, that, that's how I'm not. So I've got some bright third graders, but I, I have a hard time keeping them. The charts, the charts are really nice, and there's lots of lots of patterns to see, not just the physiology. Do you explore the general questions to have the people just remembering the chart? I haven't. So the question is, do we do we explore how to predict the number? And uh, I have not done that. I've never thought about it. Do you talk about the base Fibonacci? No. No, we haven't done that. So. Um, we, we, so I, the, the, yeah. There's, there's, they can go a long ways, and I haven't taken it that much. Any other questions? What, what school is it? Uh, Washington University in St. Louis. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, do you generally find your youngest kids like fifth and a little great bit younger are comfortable generalizing things? The, um, what I find with our math circle is that um, it takes these kids about a year until they're ready to start. So whatever age I get them, it takes them a year to really get into the program. Maybe not, maybe a half a year. It takes them a while to get into it and understand that they're going to be asked why. They're going to be asked to take it to the next step on their own. And um, so it, it, it takes some pulling teeth. But, uh, so fifth graders, some of them certainly can do that, um, but not usually right away. Yeah. How many are in the session? We usually um, we usually get ten to twenty is usually what we have. Now, since, since you'll ask, that, that, since you brought that up, one unique thing that we've done with our math circle that, that I that I I don't know how I could run a math circle without doing this is I've recruited our undergraduates, and we get. Um, so I, I get three or four undergraduates that come, and, uh, and I'm slow, so I said I lost the 10th graders. I'm slowly recruiting them as well to be my helpers. And so, so we'll do a problem like this, and then we just say go, and then the undergraduates spread out, and, um, and ideally let the kids work on their own, but you know how kids are. You know, if they start talking about superheroes, then we, gotta, then we come in and make them talk about math and ask them why, and keep them going. <laughs> Any other questions? That's good. Thank you.